Hi, welcome to Azure Developers APIs in Action. In this session, we're going to talk about the role of API management within an Azure integration platform. My name is Mike Stevenson. I'm a 15 year um, Azure MVP. I'm based in Newcastle in the United Kingdom. The link uh, there's for my blog, which people are welcome to check out if you'd like to learn about any of the content I write. Um, my day job involves working with a company called Turbo360, who are a specialist in cloud monitoring and cost analysis on the Azure platform. If you'd like to learn more about um, sort of architecture topics around Azure integration, which a lot of them involve the role of API management and comparing different technologies, such as things like logic apps versus API management, um, I've got a YouTube playlist, which is shown on the screen here. There's there's lots of good content in there, so please check that out if you'd like to learn more about that topic. So if we start thinking about the role of um, API management in an enterprise integration platform. So imagine that I'm an architect or an integration developer, and I'm trying to build a platform that will implement lots of different interfaces, connecting various systems across the organization. A good diagram that could describe our platform similar to this one shown on the screen here. So we have different capabilities that we require to build integration solutions such as system workflow. We may have ETL and ELT um, patterns. We've got enterprise application integration. And some of the core areas that API management fits in this is shown in the API space and things like the helper function space. So there's a number of different use cases where API management can really help you with your integration platform development. And I think this diagram is a great way to show the relationships between the different technologies on the Azure platform. So for example, logic apps, functions, and API management can be combined together to produce a great integration solution. In the rest of the session, we're going to take a look at some example use cases and talk about how these technologies work together and particularly focusing on the role of API management. So first off, let's imagine a scenario where we have an integration with success factors over here. So success factors is an HR system. In this case, we're publishing updates to employees. And over on the right hand side, you can see we've got a number of target systems that care about different um, different messages. So for example, an employee was um, a new hire, an employee had their details changed, they would go through to different systems. Now in this case, we've got technologies like Logic Apps and Service Bus shown here. So they would do that enterprise application integration. And we would do things like pub sub patterns, which would trigger different integrations. Now, when we think about the role of API management, see a couple of examples down here, where API management would be used to help facilitate these integrations. So in this scenario here, I've got my person updates that go out to SAP and go to Salesforce, where I'm going to use API management to help me implement those integrations. If I'm a logic app developer for things like Oracle or SQL, we might have built in connectors that talk directly to those databases. But when we talk to an API, a great thing to do is use API management to help centralize that all of your APIs. So that gives you a single place where you can manage, change them, provide monitoring and security features to get that um, centralized governance of your use of APIs. And from Logic Apps, you would have the API management connector that would help um, implement this sort of connectivity piece from a Logic App, in this case, to SAP over here. Now, some of the good things you can do in this pattern, so I'd, I would refer to this as an outbound API if I was looking at it from the perspective of an integration developer. So from my integration platform, the direction of these operations is to go from the platform to a third party system. So in this case, I can centralize the use of things like security for how I connect to SAP. I can centralize the monitoring. I can centralize any kind of mapping capability that might be um, reused across multiple integrations. And the key thing from that centralization is on my integration platform, I'm probably building lots of integrations that talk to SAP beyond just a simple person up cert. 
there may be other integrations around employees or other use cases, I can reuse the proxy APIs that are built to sit in front of SAP. And API management's role is really about making the integration simpler and providing those reusable services. So that would be what I'd class as an outbound API. The next one we have is one I would class as an inbound API. So this is where inside my organization, I've got some line of business system down here and I've got maybe an, a logic app or some other technology like a function where I've created an integration on top of that application. So let's pretend this line of business application has some kind of database connector and I want to be able to expose that as an API to other systems. So if we're allowing our systems to integrate with an API first approach, that makes the integrations that we build become more reusable. So in this case, I've chosen to sit API management in front of this logic app rather than have the end systems call a logic app directly. That opens up a lot of really good things. So here, it, let's imagine in this case, I've got a system of engagement such as a power app where I can create the ability for that power app to go through API management and reuse that logic app. But I may also start ending up having other apps that I build. So maybe I've got you know two other apps we build and they can talk to the same API and reuse the integration that I built, but I can give them different security keys or I could configure different ways that the authentication or the rate limiting would work. A good example actually is the rate limiting where if, if I build more APIs on top of this system, um, I can control how much each application might use it. So in this scenario where I call that an in inbound API, I'm really thinking that these applications are inside my organizational boundary, they're internal apps we build, and our API management's used to connect them to other systems in the organization. The next pattern we have is what I'd class as an external API. So if you really notice this definition of the organizational boundary here, so in this case, I've got a, a scenario where I've got um, trains that travel around the country. We have telemetry events come from these trains. They come through a, a third party. So if we imagine on the diagram, there's actually a third party who collects those messages and then forwards them to our organization. So here we're having API management sat at the edge of our organization we can expose an API out to that third party. And then what we might do is we need a back end for this API. And in this case, you can imagine the events we get from our rail cars, we're gonna send them to multiple different systems. So if we look over on the right hand side here, we've got an application database who needs to know about early delivery of rail cars. We've got a customer system here that needs to know about where's the current status of a rail car for the order associated with um, with that customer. And here we've got a data platform where we've built Power BI reports on top of Synapse and we need to do data analytics of these rail car events. So in order to get to all of these integrations, API management over here is sitting in front of a function that provides some backend logic such, such as validation, transformation of the data. And then this message gets dropped on the service bus and that can pub sub for our different integrations through logic apps. Coming back to API management, the, the real benefits here are, again, things like the security keys or the security um, token validation. We can encapsulate that in API management to expose that API to more than just one party. So maybe, you know, in certain APIs, you might have hundreds of different people who call it. But we can also do things like rate limiting. We're centralizing the management and monitoring of the API. We can perform some basic transformation operations if we want. And API management's a great way to expose that API outside the organization boundary. We may even choose to combine other um, technologies on Azure. So common one might be that. Let's imagine you put front door, you might put that in front of API management as well. And this, this really shows kind of the, the building block approach that Azure provides, you can choose the right building blocks and connect them together to implement your solution that meets your requirements. Next up, we've got utility APIs. And I think, again, this, this is maybe a bit of an underutilized benefit of API management. So in this case, I've got data from a plant coming through an integration 
inside my platform. So remember that my integration platform has hundreds of interfaces in it. This is just two or three of them. I've got my events coming from the plant, the pub, uh, pub sub through service bus here, and they trigger different integrations going to different target systems on the right. One of the things in this case, I've got a message about a rail car getting loaded and leaving the plant. And I need to do things like conversion logic. So one of the challenges I always find with um, Azure is if I want to just do some really simple logic, like in this case, I want to do um, like a weight conversion from, you know, pounds to kilos. I want to do a really basic validation function. Um, having to spin up a function app every single time for each new use case um, can be quite um, overwhelming in terms of the amount of function apps you would end up with. But you can quite easily build a, con um, a conversion API in API management. And you could encapsulate all of that all of that common logic inside the API. So I can, you know, in this case, I can even just use a, um, a policy that um, just does a little bit of C sharp code in the policy to, to do that conversion and return the value from pounds to kilos. Then I've got a single API that all of my different integrations that need that conversion logic can share that API. Now, if, if that logic started getting more complex, maybe I sit a function app behind it, and that could be the back end for the function if I needed more complicated code that required complex C sharp. But can, um, creating those common utility APIs that encapsulate logic, lots of my integrations are going to need a really good use case for API management as well. Now, if we think what this means, then in my integration platform, we looked through a number of different use cases there of different ways I'm using API management. But really what it boils down to is in my integration platform, data coming in can come in through either connectors from Logic Apps and it can come in through API management if we're exposing an API operation to another application or a third party. Once I'm inside my integration platform, I'm tending to use things like event grades, logic apps, functions, service buses, doing the internal processing in my platform. And then as I go out from the platform to other applications, again, I'm back to using connectors and logic apps for certain um, operations of so things like those database connectors, or if there's an out of the box connector for a given application. And then where there isn't a connector and I need to use HTTP based APIs, that's again where API management plays a role. And between these two cases here, I'm creating centralization for the management and monitoring of all of my APIs coming inbound and outbound from my enterprise integration platform. Thank you for to listening to today's session. Um, I hope you enjoyed this talk about the role of API management within an Azure integration platform.